Uh, welcome to a uh, special summer edition of Cooperative Vermont. I'm Matt Kropp and I'm um, coming to you from Burlington, Vermont, and I'm excited uh, to have on the line uh, Jim Blaine, uh, the head of the State Employees Credit Union, uh, CQ, down in, uh, down in North Carolina. Uh, Jim, welcome to, the, welcome to the program. Thanks, Matt. So, so you've you've really been kind of an outspoken uh, credit union advocate, credit union leader, um, really bringing bringing kind of a unique voice to the to the conversation that uh, that few people have really been able to to, to match. I think so. Um, do you want to start maybe a little bit by talking about your background, how you came into the credit union uh, movement, and sort of what what kind of that vision is for you? Uh, I'm a native North Carolinian. Uh, grew up in a place called Chapel Hill. That's where the University of North Carolina is. Mother was a teacher, her father was an economic professor. Uh, my only sister lives near you, Matt. She's up in uh, near Montreal. Uh, my dad was originally a Canadian, so uh, welcome to the border states, right? Been with Credit Union for over 40 years, came by accident, you know, recession and all that kind of stuff, needed a job. I always say uh, coming to the Credit Union was the uh, result of the uh, best offer I had at the time. Um, I didn't know what one was. I was going to come work for a year and go back to school, that kind of thing, right? And somewhere along the line got converted. So uh, with me, you've got a true believer in the unions as the uh, premier financial solution for consumers. What um, kind of what around what time period was that? Was that you said 40 years? So kind of in the in the 70s was when you were really kind of getting oriented to the credit union model. Came to work here in 1973. Um, so yeah, that was so, that was a big moment of transition for credit unions in terms of um, kind of moving moving from the growing through increasing the number of institutions to kind of growing through consolidation. Um, what was the experience like? How how have you personally sort of experienced that uh, that sort of trajectory? And what do you have any kind of thoughts on on that on that front? When I came to work, there were probably 20,000 different credit unions in North in uh, the United States, uh, generally aligned along governmental units or business enterprises. It's pretty rare to have a community organization. Our credit union when I started was about $50 million in assets. That was a very large credit union at the time. Uh, credit unions generally were not known. Uh, they were very uh, sheltered, private kind of organizations. So, over the last 40 years, we've become better known. The consolidation, I think, has resulted primarily from, in 1982, the field of membership issue was broadened so that credit unions could take in multiple groups. And I, I think that was really the principal reason consolidation started. It has been accentuated by increasing complexity, compliance, and regulation. It has also been um, uh, accelerated by economies of scale. It is just more efficient to get to a larger size. But for small credit unions, I wouldn't ask them to give up because I think that those efficiencies, if you run a credit union cooperatively, can probably be achieved around 15, 25 million. You can really run a good, local, viable credit union in a 10, 15 million dollar range. As long as you keep it simple, you don't want to become Citibank. Really great things. So one one of the things that I've found broad and field membership, complexity, all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. It's pretty normal. It's happening in all businesses. And Matt, if you look at it, in my opinion, we consolidate the airlines, we consolidate the food stores, we consolidate the hospitals, we can we look at where we're headed. Because that really is not a competitive marketplace when you only have two or three providers across the state. And so I think you get low quality service when it's not competitive, you also get rising prices. So the cooperative model is uh, still a very viable alternative to the consolidation we see going on. One of the things I've heard about you guys and you know you're 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 one of the large large credit unions in terms of scale, but in terms we of We don't act like it though, Matt. Mm -hmm. We don't act like it. That's what's the real key, all right? Well, one of the things I've heard, and I was curious if you could talk a little bit about this, was you kind of engaging volunteers sort of at the branch level rather than, or in addition to, you know, having a few board, you know, a few board members at the apex. Can you talk a little bit about kind of how that, um, how, how you guys as a large institution still try to kind of keep that, keep those sorts of community connections and um, do things that, that, that counter that what people expect from, from your scale? 
Matt, it's a struggle for all cooperatives to keep the members engaged, right? Regardless of your lives or regardless what type of cooperative you are, keeping folks involved in the cooperative gets harder as you grow, right? So you know, there are more and more decisions that are perhaps made by management versus volunteers. Uh, there are greater complexity in the decision making. The way we do it, we have 254 so all across North Carolina. What we have had since 1973, by the way, is an advisory board of about 12 members, volunteers that four times a year. They discuss what's going on in the local community with the Great Union. They also get an update on what the organization is doing statewide. They provide all their, you know, they go out to dinner four times a year. The minutes of those meetings are summarized and reach our board of directors. So they get direct input every month from these groups. It's kind of like having 250 folk groups out there also. You want some quick feedback on something you're considering. Having these volunteer groups is a tremendous asset. We have two two-year terms, so we take them. Part of the uh, effort is to try to educate our members and get broader and broader support out there. Also, if you get into political trouble or you get into business trouble or whatever else, get the information out quickly, have somebody boots on the ground in the local community that understands what you're doing and why you're doing it. And it also gives you great credibility because we believe our neighbors and our friends more than any kind of memo from the credit union, right? Mm -hmm. In addition, each of our branches has a still. We still have local loan review committees. So, if our staff turns down a member for a loan, the member thinks they weren't heard, they weren't considered fairly, or whatever else. Like, they'll meet with a group of their local peers. And those peers can override all the all the professional management. Mm -hmm. They can't do crazy stuff. Right? They have to do it in line with policy, but. It's a great safety valve to make sure as you get larger that you don't miss the in the personal interaction with the local member. Because that's so what it's preserving the credit committee type mechanism. Yeah. So so it's not the decisions are not being made by a faceless person. They can you can be judged by your peers locally on those kind of decisions. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have we have those two levels. Uh, we also have volunteers on our audit committee. And uh, anywhere we can insert uh, volunteers, do very much transparency in the organization. The other thing, as you grow, gets to be an elephant, right? Members don't know how to reach you and touch you, hold of you. And, well, the more information you can make available readily, they don't have to guess or ask. Then I think it builds a, a sense of trust that they know what's going on and they can ask anything they want. So, mm -hmm. and so. The it's, it sounds almost like a like um, kind of a federation structure um, that, that you have together. Is it um, so? So at this, um, I guess, two questions, kind of an upwards and a downwards one. Um, at the, the upwards, do these kind of these local advisory groups tend to be kind of where you draw sort of new board members from? So it's kind of like a volunteer leadership development role. And then on the downward or sort of on the downward flowing side is is the composition. Does that kind of come from the board or administrative level or does that um, do you have like some mechanism for individual members who are within each branch's kind of catchment area uh, that sort of bring them into the volunteer fold. Kind of how does how does that fit together? Uh, the answer is both. It's, it's a great question. Uh, our last two board members, you know, the board of directors, did happen to come from the advisory board that had that service. It's all for, always a good credential. It's necessarily a training ground or a development ground. The, member, the local advisory board members are selected by the local management and local advisory boards. They're recommended to the board. The board approves them, but almost without question, they're going to approve whoever local folks submit. You know, cohesive group community. We try to get folks from the different kind of sectors in the community, teaching the university, the Department of Transportation, the prison system, try to get all the kinds of diversity sure that you you know you're hearing from the community at large about what's going on and again the rotation allows you to bring more people on and change them uh, to keep them very very active I don't know if it helped you uh, Matt our you said federated that's a key point what we 
basically this very large organization with 254 franchises out there. Boards, policies, and broad rules on interest rates and how you do business sort of thing. We then devolve the decision making to the local community. There, you hire experienced folks. They know their community. They can make much decisions if they're from the authority. Do so. That's very well for us. So you get some surprises sometimes. You get a lot of creative solutions. To local community needs tailored for that individual and for that community. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes better for our staff, right? Everybody wants to have a job where you can make decisions and you can have an impact and see the results of your work. And our members love it that if you're usually talking to the decision maker when you're talking to the local person. They have to call Raleigh, Stuttgart, or something else. The decision's made right there. That's a very powerful tool in building uh, support for the ready local. So, so when when you're talking about the the different kind of forms of community representation that you seek out, I I did sort of an in-depth study of the development of the State Employees Credit Union here in Vermont, um, and one kind of tension that existed within that organization's development was, um, you know, you had this kind of core founding community of the state employees, and then as the field of membership expanded, new groups came in, you know, the identity of the organization gradually changed. What what do you sort of see the or is the state employees kind of group? Kind of still kind of a core constituency, especially in the governance piece. Are there other communities that have come in in more recent years um, as the credit union has gotten larger and had a, you know a bigger footprint just in the general economy in North Carolina? Like how is how is that shaken out for you? Multiple answers here. North Carolina is one of the ninth largest in population in the, state, in the country. So we have 10 million people in North Carolina. Two million of them are members of the credit union. We only have 100,000 state in North Carolina, Matt. We've got retirees, other folks, but we have had forever the growing groups or family members, right? I have kids of which have never worked for the state in any fashion, never will. We're still operating under the original charter definition we had in 1937. But the key then, those folks that set up our credit union said all state employees, all teachers, all university employees, all community employees, and their families. We started out with a very, very broad membership. We have never added any groups over the year. Our over the years, our goal is simply been able to expand our network where we serve in that group of state. In about three years, we find out of touch in every county in the state. So we're local everywhere. So we never added the groups. To answer your question, from day one, the highway patrolman married to a nurse, right? So we've always had diversity. So we've never added groups, but the diversity of people we have really reflect everybody in North Carolina. And any member who is older than 18, has the right to run to be on the board. All right. Mm -hmm. so we have uh, several folks now that are not really state employees or not currently state employees. That's still our core group, but that's not a requirement. You know, once a member, always a member. Every member is equal. We will abide by all those principles, and everybody's eligible. So, and sir. Um, so no, another thing that I've kind of heard about and has, you know, you've has raised some, uh, some, you some, some, uh, not everything you hear. <laughs> well, that's why I'm getting it from the horse's mouth. Um, the, the, um, the, no, the sort of advertising policy. That's, that's another one that's, that's, that there's certainly caused some conversations around the kind of credit union world. Do you, can you talk a little bit about sort of your approach to that kind of outreach and, you know, how you, how you as an organization kind of get the word out? We work on word of mouth. We have never done any commercial, TV, print, media, any kind of advertising. We just don't do it. The original idea is we ought not to spend our current members' money to try to attract other members. What we ought to do for our existing members well, and if you do, we will tell the story for you for and saying where the as in the neighborhood. So growth has never been part of our book. Grown because we've succeeded in executing our members of the 
And if you do, then they'll tell their family, their friends, neighbors, and all that. So uh, the other thing is advertising for a credit union always seems ineffective. You're paying to reach all those eyeballs, in our case, most of whom are not eligible to join. So when you advertise, you're paying a premium uh, to get your message out. So, But I think everybody believes, and the Internet is changing to that it's kind of Twitter and some of that is becoming an, uh, uh, an online uh, word of mouth system, right? We found that word of mouth has allowed us to grow as fast as we can stand. And again, with, we're all salary, none of us are incented to grow either in ship or dollars or products. So uh, growth is a result rather than hope in this organization. And or not, it works very well. And now we market the devil, all right? We send out mm -hmm. press and we do creative products and services that our members need and want. We try to push the envelope of things that get elsewhere. We try to beat the beat our competitors. So we're very, very market sensitive, but we're not after a market share or some kind of we don't want to add global to our name. We don't want to be big. It's the first thing that credit union people ask about. What size are your assets? Matt, in 40 years here, I have never had a member come in and say, how big are you all today? Now, they fuss me out about interest rates and loan policies. None of our members care how large we are. What's interesting, many of them would be very, very surprised and perhaps disappointed that we are so large because what they see is their local branch, a local person, local advisory boards. So that's the credit union. Yeah. It's not some group of folks in Raleigh or Thing like that. Now, and what, one other thing on the, on this front um, was when I, I went through North Carolina and uh, had a chance to sit down with some folks from Latino Federal Credit Union. Yeah. Um, they're not federal, you, they're state chartered. Oh, they're state chartered, okay. Uh, can you talk a little bit about sort of what that, that project and that relationship looks like? Because it seems like that sort of thing of supporting the growth of a, another communi community rather than trying to put everything under your umbrella, it seems like it sort of fits into that framework. Uh, we're we're still an, uh, a credit union that will share any information we have with any other credit union. We have nothing that's proprietary or secret or whatever you need you can get from us. About 12 years ago, um, we had a Latino influx into the state. I think the Hispanic part of North Carolina now is about six percent of our economy and growing. A very vibrant part of our economy. Uh, at that time, 12 years ago, uh, Latinos did not have access to the uh, normal banking financial system in North Carolina. And what was causing problems is if you don't have a financial institution, you got the money on you or in your mattress and people were getting shot and robbed and all kinds of stuff. So a group of the credit unions here, uh, Self-Help was a big leader, the league was in there, our regulators. We got together and formed Latino Credit Union because they, we had some language requirement and cultural requirements. We felt we needed to have a separate credit union to serve that group. So we all got together on a cooperative basis, and our part of the role was to provide the accounting and the data processing and the compliance and all that backbone structure so that they won't fall, fail. That's what kills a small or new credit union, right? Getting the mechanics right. And other folks helped with the marketing and the offices, but they employ their own folks, uh, set their own policies, had their own board, uh, they're bi everybody's bilingual. And they're now, after 12 years, they're about 200 million and have 10 branches. Wonderful uh, service to the Latino union, com the Latino community. Matt, what's interesting is the children that first group, group Immigrants, right? I'm sure how the system works. Kids speak English as well as they do Spanish. Their kids will use State Employees Credit Union or other folk as they get integrated into the system. They're no longer immigrants, they're Americans just like everybody else. I think it's good with the bringing people into the community. It's also a way to future generations to make sure they're not part of North Carolina. It's a great organization. Uh, we have a similar one called Greater Kinston, where we're doing the same thing. It is the last surviving 
predominantly African American credit in the state. And they're about $12 million, and we're providing that kind of support. And we're hoping to help them build back, uh, have a if a African American focused financial system is important for North Carolina to get people up to speed. We hope that that one can help. So, uh, we don't do this for a living. We think it's very practical have all segments of our state involved in the credit union movement. And you know, the convenient and we're large, but some smaller, again, smaller credit unions can provide local focus, better service, hit the nail on the head better than we can. We can, we can do the Walmart thing, right? Lower, better, quicker, cheaper, and all that. But some other groups in, in the state need special attention, special holding get them over those social homes. Perhaps we're not as good at doing it. That community can serve and can be a great part of every state's infrastructure. So in another um, another question just along those lines of kind of cooperating with other organizations. Um, kind of what what are both maybe your your view of this but and also just kind of how the credit union's been involved but um, the, the kind of credit union's relationship to sort of other co-op sectors. Um, that share the same structure. I have recently met some folks um, from, uh, I think, from the Renaissance Community Co-op that's getting a food co-op going um, uh, in, in North Carolina at a conference recently. And um, so, what um, what is what is what does that relationship look like, or or is there really one? Uh, we really haven't come together as well as we should. We we kind of operate in separate silos out there, and uh, we ought to do better. There are a lot of efforts, but. Uh, we operate in different spheres. Uh, Carver near Chapel Hill, so anybody trying to do a food co-op, Ruff and Slater over there is probably the one of the best people on the planet to talk to. Um, and we've got some great uh, co-ops in the state, but um, we uh, it's a kind of a dying breed. It's not very vibrant. And again, part of it is the con uh, concentration even in the electric sector, right? But we're, we're open to it together. We're just writing on different pages, it seems like. So talking for language, talking about credit unions, talking about electricity, not always a, a great match other than in And then, um, so what are your kind of stepping back to a little bit more of a, a broad view? Um, kind of what what are your your thoughts on the sort of the traje the the current trajectory of kind of the credit union movement generally? Kind of, you know, what's What's driving it? What's working well? What what do you what are your critiques and things you you think um, you know need to be need to be addressed as as we kind of continue moving forward? Well, you know the traje trajectory of number of credit unions is straight down, right? We mm -hmm. all know that. So that's already created some need for change in how we're governed as a trade organization. It may have created some needs and for change in regulatory structure. What we have now is whether it's right or wrong, we're going to have fewer and fewer larger and larger credit unions, and I think that that is not a good trend for a co-op model. So we may need to go back and say, why don't we come up with a new idea? A local financial institution is very simple. It's locally owned and controlled, and is dedicated to serving local, the local community. And I'm not sure that that's where we're going as the credit union movement consolidates. It seems that there are too many credit unions who want to be larger and larger. And I'm not sure how that helps the existing members. It makes the managers pay probably a lot better. There may be ego value, but uh, I'm not sure that that means the little service gets better and better. In fact, many credit unions see detaching whether it's mobile or internet, that we're becoming a very financial institution. I think that death for the cooperative. Cooperative model, by definition, says it's going personal. It may not be quite as efficient, but it's going to be personal, local. There are going to be a lot of people involved in having a state trying to make things better as a group. One of the interesting things our organization has done along that line, our board has said, close the borders of North Carolina. If our members move out of state, we still love them, but not that much. 
that we really can't serve them well or in Florida and California. But what we're going to do is really focus on in North Carolina. So, uh, that makes it a lot simpler. We don't have to know the rules in Virginia or we don't have to know the rules in Indiana. We don't have to think about trying to put an ATM in Northern State. We come back and can very get very, very focused to be an economic engine for help to North Carolina. So I don't know, that was kind of a meandering around, but uh, you know, local, local, local is what's happening in food, it's happening in industry, it's happening in everything. Like we've all discovered that it may not be good to not have control over your local food supply, local electric, right? Well, if people think about it, they're not, you're not dealing with a union world. The interest you pay on a loan is going out of state instead of being recirculated. And it's just like manufacturing, right? If you take the jobs, the financial sector, if you let it get outside of your pole, all that expertise, leadership, and jobs gets exported from your state. You need to go back and deal locally with your financial institution if you can, like do with your local store or use a local repair shop or in buy your car locally or whatever it is. Make sure our local economies stay vibrant. The other thing, Matthew, is if you're dealing with somebody locally and in retail business, I know where to find you. I can bring a bunch of food. Uh, friends and jump you at church or Google on the Twitch there, There's accountability. Discipline, right? You can have some discipline that must have at the base of how you do business. And we've lost that because we no longer know exactly who we're right. right. I mean, that, 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 that sort of yeah. social accountability was foundational for early credit unions' ability to have virtually no defaults. We're, we're back, We uh, hopefully we've always been back to that idea of local, the idea of socially responsible investing makes sense. You should have your checking account with somebody local if you can. You should have your savings, you should have your mortgage, right? Again, to recirculate the money in the community to provide jobs, but also for that accountability. And I think the credit unions have that in space. If we let people know that we are accountable to them. We are a co-op. You do own it. You can reach us. You can vote us out of office if you want. I mean, that's a very, very powerful tool for this. Mm -hmm. well, so, so looking out over this landscape in which it seems like the, uh, you know, the, the, the credit unions with the, the minimal level of accountability seems more the the rule than the exception at this point. With kind of um, what do, what do you see as as leverage points for for potentially trying to you know redirect that and move things in, in the direction of you know this kind of local accountability and rootedness and um, you know what's what what do you, what do you see as as the, the the way forward for those wanting to kind of really bring those values to the forefront of the credit union movement again? Well, unfortunately, I think the basic option we all have is to stop business with credit unions or other businesses we don't respect, we don't like. You stop doing business with them, and you still have the advantage of not having proxy voting. So you can go to an annual meeting, you can be heard, and you, if there's enough concern, vote for them. But it's very, very tough to do. Oh, yeah, I've, I've, I've tried. I know, I know, I know you yeah. have. So as you get larger, it's tougher to get to, right? So then, the way you, start, you, you do it is you take your business elsewhere. But you've got to have a, another alternative, which is another reason to make sure we continue to have a variety of credits available in every state. Right? It's not one large one, right, that may be unresponsive. Uh, you need to have, may, make sure we get Latinos and African Americans and whatever else, however you want to divide it. And again, uh, we have reform at the regulatory level uh, and a lot of levels because you can't make it too complex for the average man and woman to run. And we're heading towards that. And the regulatory environment these days, sometimes it seems like they suspect us all of being criminals, that they have just not yet been caught. 
but I see on credit union folks. They're trying to do the right thing. And I think, again, if we go back and create another simpler credit union model, maybe you don't do a lot of complex things. It has a limited focus. And we may need to go back there. And I should mention that our credit union doesn't do any business lending or business services. We're a consumer organization. That's what we were designed to be. That's what our members want us to be. So uh, we have stayed limited in only in North Carolina, only consumers, only a limited array of services. Not trying to be everything to everybody, trying to help our working men and women with the basic financial needs that we all we all have to play in the system, right? We don't have a choice. You gotta get some you've got to have a credit card. But just those basic services can make a huge difference. Our members data most of our members still are doing check to paycheck, all right? That's mm -hmm. the reality of what it is. So they need a good ally when something blows up. Something always blows up for all of us, right? Oh yeah. So the, the, the ability to finance a car if the uh, if the you know contractor goes over budget or what have you. Lacking a rich uncle, we all need a big union there that can write, help us out. Doesn't ask too many questions or whatever else, and knows that we'll miss a payment every now and then or all that. But they know us in our local community. Right? They know we're hardworking, good people, and trying to get the right things done. So, um, you, having um, CQ left CUNA um, recently, and um, do you do you see there being like a space for um, or the, for the for the, kind of the convening of the, these credit unions that really have a strong sense of these the, these credit union values mission that you're that you're talking about for, for 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 trying to kind of advance that or what do you see as the um the way the mo the movement should be organized going forward uh, i'm sure the answer to that but i'm sure matt that what credit unions do not need is one more trade association all right we don't need any more we can get out of those uh, i think what the concentration of credit unions, consolidation. I think direct representation, we need to get back to that model, right? Whether it's online or you know, Instagram or what, we can all communicate very easily with one another. We don't have to all, you know, get together for a convention. So, mm -hmm. back direct so that everybody gets a say and gets heard, and you don't have to filter it through. A chapter, a list, you know, whatever else. I think that's the model that makes sense going back. By the way, Matt, that was the original idea, right? One member, one vote, director. That's the original mm -hmm. idea. And so, to me. So, so do, you, do you imagine it kind of going like any any member having having a vote in these capstone organizations, or like or the member institutions when when you sort of frame it that way? I, I members. The representatives of the, union, the credit unions all had direct representation at the state level, at the uh, national level. Mm -hmm. Your finance says the number of shrinking credit unions is not going to be able to financially sustain the cost of continuing the way we are. So, nothing pro or against CUNA, it's just a model that's not going to work. It's hard to have revolutions from within. You can try, but it's very hard to change a system from within. Usually the revolution, unfortunately, comes from the outside or when the train has a wreck. Mm -hmm. So my, uh, my encouragement to all of it would be, you need to look at what's happening, fewer credit unions, new technology allows you to go direct, you need fewer layers, not more, Solve the equation. Don't wait for the train. And we'll see how that's going. A uh, lot of discussion out there now, right? Oh yeah. But all of us want a voice. That's messy and time-consuming and sometimes expensive. But it's better to hear the discordant voices than proceed and not let them have a voice. Because if you're off course, you know, it's mm -hmm. going to catch up. It came up, I think, with NCUA last week. You see, you see a regulatory agency that is good and good people and is mad person. But when you have a regulatory agency redacting a comment 
need more transparency arrived in 1984 <laughs> or something. There's something amiss and the system mm -hmm. needs. You know, you, one, what, you know, in terms of, of voice, do you want to talk a little bit about um, your blog? At Jim, for people who are watching, uh, Jim Blaine on creditunions.blogspot.com. Sort of, how did how did you get in? How did you get into to writing that? And kind of what what do you, what do you see as 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 its role in the kind of larger credit union conversation? Because you know, it's, it's certainly compared to a lot of the very very measured um, sort of pro professionalized uh, outlets for for credit union opinion, you you often cut right to the quick. So. You want to talk a little bit about just kind of that experience? For uh, listeners, Matt will like the blog, National Enquirer, and Reality TV, and all that kind of red stuff. But uh, it is to be humorous. It's a personal blog because some of the things said, I probably should say if I were working at a creator. So it's very much a personal blog. It's not really designed to hurt, but it is designed to provoke some people into hopefully thinking about what's going on. We also set our rut, right? We have our path every day, and it doesn't hurt to occasionally have somebody say, why are you doing that, and why are you on the path? Heard all the alternatives, or explain to me why you're doing what you're doing. So, uh, I think Hopefully, it is a cranky, sometimes hilarious place on an alternate way of viewing things. I do. It's uh, probably our organization is a traditional where the industry is going. Perhaps I have a different view, partly about going against the grain. Credit unions were designed for something that not necessarily uh, the movement itself. So, Anyway, I hope it's a lot of you can't use many four letter words, they're not all of them, but you can snark you want. And uh, there are a lot of people, believe it or not, some by name. Part of it is I hope that makes some of them mad. Uh, they'll reconsider some of their. So. But don't take it seriously, all right? Life is too short. So. <laughs> um. So I guess if there's any other any other topics we haven't hit on, um, yeah, or things things that you feel like you'd like to cover, or yeah, I figure we can hit on that now and then maybe sort of conclude with um, looking forward. Are there any kind of developments you see on the horizon or things that are happening now that you're kind of excited about in, in the credit union world and really see as kind of as sort of positive things that that need to be pursued? Well, it's a good it's a good question. I'm very positive on credit unions. They're the best things and sliced bread for the consumers. Matt, it's not just a philosophical thing. I'm a CPA and MBA and financially having looked at it for 40 years. It is the best financial model for consumer finance available. It is the lowest cost. It is the most effective and efficient. It is a better model than the for-profit model. If you can maintain the discipline and the integrity to stay on, on the model. Always getting lured off by other, you know, everybody else doing it some other way. Well, you know, I'm a told you to do what everybody else is doing, right? So the model itself being a not-for-profit model, if you put a for-profit bank here and a credit union here, if you run it equally as well, and the ATMs work all that, and the accounting is done by GAP, all that, we have an edge. We don't have to pay investors a 15% return. And Matt, that is a huge cost advantage in day to day operations. Loan pool and all those kind of things. As such a model, not profit, is a superior financial model to the for profit model, is less costly model. So I don't know any reason why. The future ought not to be very, very bright for credit unions. Also, don't know why some of our peers want to move to the for-profit model, because in that model, size always right economies of scale. So you can't out Walmart, Walmart. You can't out Bank of America. You can't out Credit Card Capital One. You can't right outdo Fannie and Freddie, as we found out. 
but you can be a very effective local, local institution and outdo all of them if you're willing to try. A little bit ornery. Anyway, I'm very optimistic on the credit unions going forward. If we can survive our own success, we're now organized, we're now out there. I hope it doesn't go to our head and we forget who brought us to which were our members who needed basic, low cost, convenient financial services provided locally when they from somebody else. Amen.